All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to the book of Joshua, um, uh, A Type and Shadow, and we are looking at um, Joshua chapter uh, 1, verses 16 through 18 today. Uh, good to see everybody joining us today. Um, and uh, anyway, um, so... Um, this is uh, the book of Joshua, Type and Shadow, and we are looking at um, how that the book of Joshua, we're discovering how that the book of Joshua is filled with types and shadows of other things, such as the kingdom of God, the eternal Christ, and the finished work. And as we look here in the Old Testament, many people would not think that the book of Joshua or any other Old Testament book would contain so much revelation of the eternal truth Father God declared as the end result of the about you from the beginning of time. And uh, so uh, this is so powerful. Um, so as we continue in this verse by verse study, it's important to look at all scripture through the proper interpretive lens which is Father's eternal love for his creation. I love that. Uh, so my goal is to look and see what Father was trying to reveal within a people long ago uh, that would even still speak to us today as these people were, as God was interacting with them in their journey of their human experience. So let's get started as we dig deep into the well of Father's mind within and see more types and shadows and symbolic messages from the book of Joshua. So here in lesson seven, let's look at Joshua chapter one, verses 16 through 18, as we continue this study. So here's what it says from the New King James. So they answered, and let me just say real quickly, good to see Linda Routley joining us this morning. Uh, good to see uh, uh, Pringle George joining us this morning and others who are already watching. So we do appreciate uh, all of you so very much. All right, so Joshua chapter one, verse 16 starts. And so they uh, answered Joshua saying, all that you command us, we will do. And whoever you send us, we will go. Uh, and, um, and, and then verse 17 says, just as we heeded Moses in all things, we will also uh, heed you. Only the Lord, your God be with you as he was with Moses. Verse 18 says, whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death, only to only be strong and have a good courage. And so there's a lot of things we're seeing here, a lot of typologies, a lot of symbolisms that in reality, uh, I think the wording could have been different, but this was the mindset of the translators as they looked at um, uh, at, at an Old Testament uh, scenario, and so as we as we go along in this, let's let's watch and see uh, because uh, the reality is is that uh, when we look at the Old Testament, it's important that we do not see verbatim uh, words and in the stories uh, from modern translations, but that we see the heart of God. As I tell students in WBSU, it's very important that all scripture be interpreted in the light of God's unconditional love for his creation. And if it's not, then I tell them, go back to the drawing board and look again, because all scripture must uh, be interpreted in that light. So uh, the reality is, is that we do see a lot of typology here, and we're going to be looking at that today um, and, and see how this all fits together in uh, the book of Revelation, or, or in the, rather <laughs> the book of Joshua, so used to teaching the book of Revelation. So as we come to an end of chapter one, next week we'll be starting chapter two, uh, we, we, uh, what we are going to look at today might seem a bit like religious traditionalism. However, to be organized does not mean to be religious. I, I want to make that clear. Uh, we've shied away from the, the modern church because We've seen all of the downfalls fall, falls of the modern church as far as how that people are treated, about how the, the system seems to be a ruling system. Uh, but when it comes to Joshua, um, a leader of millions of people, and you may be leading hundreds, uh, Joshua did not have to do it alone. And that's the beautiful thing about leadership is leadership is, is and should be a team and not an independent effort. 
Uh, he had other leaders who led the thousands and leaders under them who led the hundreds. And somewhere there must have been those uh, with, with small group leaders uh, who led by the tens of tens. And so what this adds up to is organization or a more comfortable term for many today would simply be being organized. So yes, in our modern grace movement, uh, and, you know, I love grace. I love the, uh, the, 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 the concept of grace. Uh, but in our modern grace movement, many seem to think that being organized means to return to a denomination or to be a religion. Well, uh, see, that is just the way people today have been taught to think from out of a rebellious mind. And, and I want to show you this, and I want to show you this in kindness, and I want to show you this in love, and I want to help you to see a greater truth about what we're really seeing in the scriptures. Now, I know that many have been burnt out on overbearing leaders and demanding church systems. However, that does not make all leaders or uh, all church meetings obsolete and no longer needed. On the contrary, both leaders and church groups today are very necessary for many reasons. Uh, the fact is that when we look at the story of the children of Israel being led by Joshua, it is not hard to realize that success cannot be defined alone uh, by what a leader does. Amen? And so as we see this today, what, what we want to see in, in this story is that, uh, is that significant changes take place in a people only when the people pull together under a leader. Now, yes, this is an Old Testament story. Were there New Testament church groups? Yes, there were. Uh, there were New Testament church groups. There were New Testament gatherings. Uh, in houses, in hillsides, in the market square, wherever they could. Uh, but here's the thing. While a leader may not be your creator or your ultimate source of power, a leader can be a source of inspiration to keep moving uh, you uh, moving for, uh, forward, keep you moving forward, even when you are up against some of the most difficult challenges in life. And that's one of the beautiful things about having a leader. A leader is kind of like a, a best friend, a close friend. Well, think about Moses and how difficult it was for him when the children of Israel complained about his leadership. Yes, there were multiple occasions, uh, and we're going to find out just how long this went on today, uh, but there were multiple occasions where people complained about the leadership of Moses. Think about Moses. He didn't even want to be the leader in the first place. Uh, uh, it is said that Moses had a speech impediment. Uh, Moses felt insecure. Now, as a part of the, at the raised by the Egyptian uh, queen, uh, princess, the, the, the rulership there and be becoming one of the leaders in the, in the, the kingdom there, uh, but ultimately began to uh, interact with the Hebrews and, and uh, who were the children of Israel uh, and, and, and all of that and still heard God speak and led people free from Egypt's bondage. And at the same time, while on this tremendous journey ahead to the promised land, the fact is people often complain and, and and so that's one of the things that people really don't like about a church group or being part of a church group is the people that talk behind the leader's back or talk about one another or are, are, are critical and, and so on. Well, this would be like uh, when uh, a person or a church group, rather, a group of people have the same vision for their city, and yet they may not be a visionary when it comes to how to proceed uh, with how to accomplish such a large vision. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are sitting at home who have a vision for the city, have a vision for their community, but don't know how to do it. One of the problems is, is attempting to do it alone. And you can say, well, doing it one by one. I can tell you that one by one has its uh, value in, a, in any place, uh, but the one by one is not the only way to get something done. There is a benefit and strength in a group. Now watch this in Joshua chapter one, verse 16. This is from the Amplified Bible. Uh, they answered Joshua saying, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Now, the word they mentioned here refers to the Reubenites or uh, Re, Reobeni uh, in the Hebrew. Uh, the Gadonites, which we've always said Gadonites, but it's really Gadi 
in the Hebrew, and half the tribe of uh, Manasseh, Manasseh. Uh, and, and, you know, all of these words are not 100% accurate, but they're in the ballpark, and I'm not teaching the Hebrew class, I'm just giving you these words. Now, think about how difficult it must have been on this journey from Egypt, where they were in bondage for more than 400 years. Think about that. And now, having been released to go on a long walk across from Egypt to Canaan. Now, today we travel uh, to many meetings, many places by way of an automobile, uh, a car, uh, a vehicle, uh, but the Israelites walked about 5,270 miles from the bondage of Egypt to their freedom in Canaan. The truth is that Egypt is a type of the world system or a way of thinking carnally instead of thinking spiritually. Uh, and, and so we all come from our own Egypt out of bondage to a place of thinking with freedom, to thinking more clearly, to thinking more positively. Well, for the Israelites, one thing that caused this journey to take them 40 years to arrive at the promised land was because of their complaining along the way. You see, after leaving Egypt, the, the, they, they were fed regularly in Egypt. They had pl a place to sleep in Egypt, even though it might have been a hut with, you know, maybe a, a, a straw floor. Uh, still, they had a place to lay. Uh, they had a place to gather, a place to get in out of the, the cold. Uh, but but the, the road was very long and at times very difficult. Notice the story as uh, we read from Numbers chapter 14, verse 2. And it says, all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. In other words, if we had died along the way, it had been so much better than uh, being out here away from a place of security in Egypt. Uh, they loved the freedom, not being under Egypt's bondage, but at the same time, there was some difficulties along the journey. You know, a lot of us love the, the uh, we, we visit a brand new church. Uh, we love the surroundings. We love what we're seeing. We love what's going on. But all of a sudden, because there maybe is something said the way that it said, or someone does something that a way that we don't appreciate, Appreciate. Instead of turn our head to that, or instead of uh, loving them, uh, we simply run away from them. Well, here's the thing. The children of Israel wandering for 40 years in the wilderness because of their constant complaining about the conditions they met while on this journey. So what I'm telling you is not what's right or wrong in a church group. I'm telling you that so many times we just don't like the conditions, and so we complain, and it hinders us on the journey from becoming uh, uh, the person of revelation that we were intended to be. You see, the, 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 they, they wandered until the unbelieving generations died off who never stepped foot in the promised land. Think about that. Well, according to www.findanyanswer.com, it says the actual trip should have taken 11 days. A seven-year famine was responsible uh, was uh, responsible for God's chosen people ending up in Egypt, and so where they ended up was one thing, but the journey they were on should not have taken that long. No, notice Numbers thirty-two verse thirteen says, "So the Lord's anger was aroused against Israel, and He made them wander in the wilderness forty years until all the generations that." had done evil in the sight of the Lord was gone. Now, uh, it is said that if it, the Israelites had walked in a single file with three feet in between them, the line itself would ex be, have been uh, over six times the length of the total trip, uh, which the people um, uh, would have extended over a, uh, in a straight line, three feet apart, over 1,300 miles long. Uh, that's, that's a lot of people. Uh, that's a lot. Of, that's a long line. Well, if they had walked one mile a day and every day for nine months, they would have made it to the promised land instead of they took 40 years. So think about it. Uh, if, you, if you were to journey from Egypt to Canaan, you're talking about 10, 11 days to get there, uh, even walking. Uh, but when there's complaining generations of people and you're going around and around in the wilderness and, 
and generations die off and new generations are born along the way. The fact is, these are the same people that Moses led from, the, uh, from Egypt to the Jordan River where he died. Now, it was up to Joshua to lead them forth uh, from the wilderness to the land of promise. Joshua 1 verse 4, we read this uh, in a lesson one or two. It says, from the wilderness, this word wilderness is a madbar, um, uh, and this Lebanon or Lebanon, um, uh, as far as the great river, the river uh, Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. And we talked about that in the last few lessons. Now, the type or shadow of what I see here in this setting compares to the journey of the, uh, of the human experience that we have uh, seen on, uh, uh, have been on since our birth. <clears throat> Some people say that life is just a journey. Well, I don't doubt that. It's a journey coming from point A to point B, point B being the place that really should have never ended, but often does. Well, here's the thing. There are two births or two ways to see uh, this as it relates to you and I understanding our origin or our beginning. Uh, for the children of Israel, their journey did not begin in Egypt or in, in uh, bondage, yet that was all they could remember at the time. You know, sometimes people remember the bad things in life. They don't focus on the good things. They don't focus on the positive things. Well, this is similar to you and I uh, being in the earthly form of our humanness and only remembering what we have been indoctrinated with, uh, the, the thinking of how hard life is in the human realm where we are constantly bombarded and influenced by what we see here in touch. Think about how maybe our parents raised us talking about how difficult life was and really that associated in their mind to growing up maybe they were born in the depression maybe they were born in a very difficult time under a very difficult uh, 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 changing governmental system that made life hard for people uh, that could have been the case but what you hear from that is how hard life is so you grow up with this mindset of how difficult life is well you see some complain about life in general even though this appearance realm is temporary by way of the fact that nothing stays the same. 2 Corinthians 4.18 in the Passion Translation says, because we don't focus our attention on what is seen, but what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but the unseen realm is eternal. Now, what is seen can also be translated by things perceived by the senses. So what are things that are perceived by the senses? Uh, we're talking about what we see here, touch, smell, and uh, taste. Uh, we, we could just focus on the, what we see here and touch. And, and the, the seen realm, uh, the things that are perceived by the senses, we look at, uh, for example, right now, we were just talking to someone this morning um, uh, about how that, that COVID had hit their family, uh, a light case, and they were recovering. But here's the thing. We look at the coronavirus, and we think that the things that we see here in touch uh, uh, that that is uh, hard. That makes life difficult, and we focus on that. But the unseen, uh, but the seen realm, the things that are perceived by the senses, the scripture said here are temporary, which means they're subject to change. They change from day to day. But the unseen realm, or the things that are not perceived by the senses are eternal. And so what is better to focus on, the seen realm or the unseen realm? Well, the obvious is, is to focus on the unseen realm or the things that are eternal truth that we find starting with the scriptures, even modern translations. And from there we go to uh, the, the Hebrew and the Greek using Strong's Concordance or a Thayer's Lexicon or, or a, um, a, 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 a dictionary of New Testament words or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and we discover the truth. Now, the fact is that you are spirit, okay? And as a spirit being, you were birthed forth from out of the womb of God, amen? Well, therefore, your focus should always be upon the unseen realm of spirit and not be influenced in any uh any uh or influenced in any faith or to have faith in what you see here in touch yes uh, e even though we have to deal with the appearance realm daily the fact is is that we are not born 
of the appearance realm. Let me explain that in a moment. But we are born of the spirit or of the supernatural realm. Yes, there is a birth. Uh, that we call it from our parents in the natural realm. But let me explain. Uh, the scriptures teach us, and we'll look at this in a moment, that we're, we're birthed forth from the womb of God. But what happens is, is how we're birthed forth from the womb of our natural mother is that it's, we are spirit who are made or reflected as visible. Now, notice this. Um, uh, Jeremiah 1 verse 5, we all know this verse. It says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I uh, sanctified you uh, or set you apart. I ordained or appointed you as pr a prophet to the nations. While some may argue that we are not spirit beings who are birthed prior to a natural form birth of our natural uh, mother's womb. The fact is, is those who argue against and deny the evidence of the supernatural existence in eternity past, they also see that mankind existed in some form and at some point prior to being conceived in a mother's womb uh, that God knew who they were. Well, the fact is, is that God's knowing of us is different when it is outside the natural realm that mankind understands, uh, since God is omniscient or all-knowing. After all, think about this, just as God is eternal, uh, as in he uh, has always existed, uh, which makes it possible for him to have a knowledge of someone before any earthly type of conception. Well, in the Hebrew language, it tells us that mankind was conceived in the womb of God and therefore burst forth as spirit and out of God's abdomen uh, as the creator giving birth to the creation. The point is uh, that uh, Israel would have understood this concept and should have been more cooperative as they followed their way to what they hoped for. Isaiah 46 verse 3 says, listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been upheld by me from birth, literally, this should read in the belly, who have been carried from the womb. Uh, the word belly comes from the Hebrew word batan or baten. Uh, meaning to be hollow, especially the womb, and is used as the meaning abdomen. Well, John chapter 1 shows us how that all life came from God as uh, our creator, and it is the life of God, the God light that uh, of illumination that penetrates the darkness of mankind's understanding. Uh, you can read that in John chapter 1, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, but then I want to look at John chapter 1, verse 14, real quick, the Passion Translation. And it says, so the living expression became a man, or this is actually interpreted as became visible and lived among us. We gazed upon his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, overflowing with tender mercy and truth. So to live among mankind is said to also be mean to live within mankind, which is the fulfillment of Isaiah 7, 14 in the Old Testament, which says, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, or literally God with us or God within us. So not only was Christ among mankind in human form, but he has always been God with us, God with us, even in a time before time in pre creation where we were birthed forth from the womb of God. What the children of Israel should have remembered in their journey was that they were not born of Adam, but they were born or birthed forth from the womb of God. Uh, that's a key thing that all of us need to remember. Now think about this. The people told Joshua at the River Jordan, uh, all that you command us, we will do, and whatever you send us, Wherever you send us, we will go. They further told Joshua in verse 17, just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God will be with you as he was with Moses. So for me, uh, if I am going to be fa uh, going to faithfully follow a leader, now this is me, I, um, uh, Dr. Fay and I do not pastor a church. Uh, we are not part of any at church group in that respect, uh, but what we do is, is if we were to attend a church, 
Um, and we do have a church that we uh, we we have uh, gone to uh, on occasion. Um, but you know, many people aren't attending services right now for a variety of reasons. Okay, uh, usually it's because of COVID. Um, but but the thing I'm getting at is that when we if we were to be a part of a church, I would want to look at a leader who faithfully follows the Lord. I would want to know that they are aware of their divine origin and connection with the Father. I would want to know that they had some sort of a spiritual insight of, of who they were created from. Now, the fact is, is that not all people uh, have this uh, understanding, and they do live in more of a, uh, a a sensory realm perception. But that's something that I would want to look for. Do they have any sort of, a, of a, an understanding of their divine origin or their divine connection with Father? If the children of Israel had had this attitude during their entire journey, they would have saved themselves many years of suffering and difficulty while in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, instead of all those people dying off, uh, generations dying off and new generations being birthed. Nothing wrong with new generations being birthed. But the fact is, is that those the, the older generations would have made it to the promised land in that 10 or 11 day period instead of 40 years. Now, the people of Israel are just like any other people in, in the other generation in that whether they are good or bad, uh, have a good or bad attitude toward God, their response does not change things for a leader who is doing their best to serve others. Let me, let me, uh, and let me address this. When you're in a church group and there are people around you who you hear little conversations uh, in church groups sometimes that you got to turn a deaf ear to where people are complaining about the message that morning or they're complaining about uh, the choir that morning or they're complaining about something the church wasn't clean enough or something uh, without ever volunteering to help clean the church. Um, I just just nitpicky little insignificant things. I mean they can be important things but uh, but but usually it's just uh, nitpicky things. Well the thing is is that, uh, one of the things we need to do is realize that no matter what a person's attitude toward God or toward leaders is, um, we need to understand that many times, in most cases, I'll say 99% of the time, a leader is simply doing their best to serve others that they can. Well, a people who love the Lord and have a great attitude in serving others make a contribution to any generation so that a difference can be made in their surroundings. You know, I am not saying that we shouldn't be a part of the system and try to change the system, help the system be, be, to be better. But when we're talking about a natural system, a natural system can only be impacted based on the revelation of a supernatural system that you have. So what made Joshua and this mission so successful compared to the disaster in judges and uh, decisions uh, made in first and second Kings? I mean, there was so much in the, when this whole thing began to be planned. Well, it was that the people obeyed those who ruled over them, or in a better way of saying this, uh, they faithfully obeyed those who led them. You know, when we're talking about uh, leaders. If you take a church group of hundreds and you're talking about a leader who's in the pulpit every Sunday morning teaching, whether they're teaching by television or live stream or however, when you look at that and, and you think about how that um, uh, there are other leaders, many churches call them elders, associate ministers, whatever the case may be. And then there's home group leaders and there's there's the ushers and all these different people. When you think about that, there must be a, a follow the leader type scenario to some degree. Uh, that doesn't mean that we blindly follow a leader who tells us to do goofy things. That's, that's not the case at all. Uh, I remember the story uh, in the U.S. Of, of a man by the name of Jim Jones. Jim Jones was a pastor in uh, the greater L.A., uh, California area. And I remember that, that there was a minister who personally reported what a great minister and great teacher and, and 
prophet of God that Jim Jones was. But sometime later, um, a year or more later, um, Jim Jones began to follow a different path and begin to infect people with a, a falsity that caused some to run from him and others to congregate to him even more so. Well, the reality is, is that when we talk about things like that, we've seen the bad, okay? Have you ever seen the bad in government? And yet we still have a government in this natural world. Have you ever seen the bad in a pastor? And yet we still have pastors in this world. Have you ever seen the bad in a church group? Yet we still have church groups in this world. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been a, a run from the church and been a part of a home study group? Uh, have you ever seen anything bad come out of that home study group? Oftentimes, yes. Uh, well, but the fact is we still have home study groups. Um, have you ever seen the bad on Facebook or on YouTube? YouTube, or yet we still have people preaching and speaking to, in the lives of others on Facebook and, and YouTube and so on. The, the fact is, is that these things are just tools that can help us to become stronger and, and better in our effort uh, to, to uh, succeed in this supernatural journey. The reality is, is that uh, in the supernatural realm, there is nothing bad. Uh, the only thing that could be bad in the supernatural realm is our lack of understanding the truth about the supernatural realm, right? And, and so as we look at this, and we've never seen nothing wrong with God, so we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit as one. In that group, we've never seen anything bad, and, and they still exist. As a matter of fact, when you look at everyone created by God, uh, the entire system of the cloud of witnesses of billions and billions of spirit beings, and some of them actually reflect into this earth realm as visible, the fact is they still exist. They're important to us. Well, the people uh, uh, in this situation were willing to sacrifice their time and talents for the greater good of mankind. In other words, what I'm telling you, we hear a lot about scripture, about all of the, 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 the complaining and the negativity in the children of Israel on this journey to the, uh, to the land of promise. But what we often don't hear about is the good things, uh, the, the, the people that sacrifice themselves for the greater good of mankind. Uh, we know that it, it makes a powerful statement when a person sacrifices his or her own time, money, uh, preferences, um, uh, 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 talents, uh, in order to help someone else have a better life. Well, how did a couple of million people make it on a journey of, that was over 5,000 miles long, uh, and all of those complainers and those who got tired and were ready to give up? Well, I think that it was because of all of those who maintained the right attitude and who were an encouragement to the rest of the group. This type of selfless effort is what is called love. You understand that the greater good of a group is not who the gossipers are. Uh, the greater good of the group is not who... Um, uh, the, the greater good is, is not who the complainers are. The greater or good is, is not those who complain about the church not being clean and are not willing to come help clean the church. The, the greater good is, can we love one another? That's the greater good. Can you be a part of an imperfect group and still maintain love? Can you be on social media and, and, and be a part of imperfect groups filled with imperfect people and still love them, still let love be the, the, the main denominator or the common denominator? Uh, the greater good is always love. Well, when you devote yourself to others because of love, then the heart of the Father is displayed from within you. This is what I'm seeing here as a typology in the book of Joshua. Now, to conclude today, Joshua 1 verse 18 says, whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Now, I could have got into the Hebrew word about death, and I could have looked at what the, the natural language, the modern language is really saying versus what the original language might be saying, but I, I, I would not think that God had anything to do with their decision to put someone to death because they were one of the complainers or doubters, uh, but it does seem that discipline would at least be in order. And so can you imagine that Joshua passes down a word and Joshua Joshua speaks to the main body of leaders, say out of 2 million, there were 
200,000 uh, um, of the main leaders under Joshua. In, in reality, there was a main leader over each tribe, and then there were sub leaders in that group. So that ultimately, because we're not talking about we're going to text everybody in the group uh, in in the book of Joshua. It's not that we're going to send an email broadcast out to everybody in the group, or we're going to do a YouTube video to get out today's announcements. No, the fact is, is there had to be mouth to mouth communication. So as a leader would speak to a group, not everybody in the group probably heard what was said, so others had to pass it on until it finally reached all the people. Well, again, Joshua had the job of clearing uh, out the wilderness, the wandering tribes, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G, the wandering tribes of Canaan, so that the Israelites could have a home. Again, I've said this in lesson one, but the wandering tribes is an allegory for the wandering thoughts within the soul of mankind. In other words, uh, it is the, 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 the thoughts of of, of how mankind um, uh, is involved in so much negativity within their soul, that's where it starts, and, and how that we can change the way that we think so that we can literally uh, not be complainers, but be encouragers. Well, when serving in a group or being part of any group, rather, uh, whether 2 million or 200 or even 20 people strong, it takes keeping your own thoughts in line with the truth of who Father God created you as. And as these people walk purposely uh, from Egypt to Canaan, well over a 5,000 mile journey, they, there must have been a wave of love flowing among them, even if they had to keep reminding themselves each day of the journey. Think about it. The truth is, that what they were doing, we're hearing about the complainers in scripture and by, by, by rights, it, it happened. But I want you to think about the greater good that was being done, the greater number of people who would just love one another and who would keep this wave of love flowing from one to another that kept them strong and kept them moving uh, forward in the journey. Joshua chapter one, verse 16 through 18 is a picture of the love. Uh, uh, it's a picture of love in mass quantity due to the numbers of all of the Israelites there. So maybe you have an opportunity to join with a, a group Group that God is calling you to make some sacrifice of your time and talents. Maybe you're used to doing something different on a Sunday morning or on a Wednesday evening, but you sacrifice your time and you become a part of that group. Well, I want to ask you today, are you holding back because you have been burnt by church groups before? Uh, what about the talents that God has gifted you with that can be a benefit to others in that group? Talents maybe that you're not using anymore because they don't really seem to have much private or personal personal value, but they were really of value to groups of people. Well, think about these 2.5 tribes of people who thought about not only the consequences of their decision to follow the leadership before them, but what about the consequences of not being there for that person or small group that needs what God has placed within you? See, it's not always about you. The pastor said something that hurt my feelings. Uh, someone in the group, I was with a small group, maybe a Sunday school class or a Bible study class, and someone in the group really put my opinion or my view down and didn't agree with me. Think about that. It's so easy to walk in offense. It's so easy to get hurt. It's so easy to carry a grudge. Uh, but, the, but you know what is much easier than that? Uh, because see, that's from the realm of the senses, the realm of what I see here and touch, right? But the greater value is that which is eternal, and love is eternal. Hurt feelings are temporary. Grudges are temporary, although there are people who attempt to hang on to them for a lifetime. Well, even life is like a vapor uh, of smoke, the scriptures say. Even life is just like a, a short time. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be. Life can be much more than that. Well, remember that the group, uh, the church group you were once a part of was not God who did you wrong. Uh, remember that the leader who may not have served you well was not God who, uh, who, who actually 
uh, went above and beyond by creating you and placing his life within you. The reality is, is that it was never God. And, and if God established the church system, now keep in mind that the church is an organism. It's a living organism of billions and billions of people in the spirit realm. And some of us have manifested in this natural earth realm. The reality is, is that that we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by that which is eternal, not by that which is temporary. So there's always another way to look at things around you. And instead of complaining about the journey, join in with the group and be one who remains strong and of a good courage uh, and imparts uh, what the one standing or sitting next to you actually needs, right? So I think that's the, the, the type and shadow of what I see in the book of Joshua here in verses 16 through 18. We touched on this last week, but I, I really wanted to wrap this up today in, in the, these three verses because we're seeing leadership in action. We're not seeing perfect leadership. We're not seeing that no one made uh, that no one made any mistakes. We're seeing imperfection, uh, but imperfection is held together, and imperfection becomes better. It becomes perfect because love is present. So it's very important that we love one another in all things. We are created as one, and we need to remain in love because of uh, uh, remain as one because of love. So I hope you got something from this lesson today. And I just encourage you to join me next time for more on the book of Joshua, uh, a type and shadow as this verse by verse study unfolds. And we go to uh, Joshua chapter two. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Joining me tomorrow night, uh, Pastor Mike Popovich is going to be with me on Kingdom Dynamics Friday morning. It's been confirmed uh, that uh, Bishop uh, uh, um, uh, Kirby uh, De Lenerol, uh from Sri Lanka is going to be with me on Friday morning conversations starting this week. So we'll see everybody then. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.